Hello, my name is Robert French, and I'm the founder of RF Ministries and the pastor of Balanced Life Christian Fellowship in St. Charles, Missouri. Welcome to today's episode of Daily Bread. Hello, this is Pastor French welcoming you to another segment of Daily Bread. It has always fascinated me that Jesus represented himself so differently than the priests of Israel. He wore no ephod or breastplate, no coat of checkerwork, which is embroidery, no turban or sash, nothing that would have shown him to be a priest. His clothing was simple, as that of a common man, and yet he was the son of Jehovah. Jesus did not have to wear garments to show who he was. It was what he said and the works that he wrought that set him apart, not his mode of dress. And yet they addressed him as rabbi, meaning master or teacher, because they knew who he was, the one promised. It was said of him that no man ever spoke the way he did with authority behind his words. Also, the disciples did not dress in priestly garments or wear rings to kiss and have men bow down to them. They were servants of the people before the Lord to minister the word of faith to all that would hear. I've seen for years how people wear their religion and how the clergy dresses. To what purpose? What are we supposed to be? What we are supposed to be is not represented by what we wear. You can dress in religious garb and be as far from the principles of Jesus as the East is from the West. There have been examples of this in recent weeks. Priests who wear their priestly dress but molest children and such things. It has to go far beyond what we wear. When will we learn that what we wear does not necessarily represent who we really are? My question has always been, where is the instruction or where is it represented in Scripture? In the book of Exodus, we can read what the Lord told Moses about the garments of the high priest and the priest of the tribe of Levi. However, I find no such instruction concerning garments for the ministers of the gospel of Jesus in any of the gospels or the letters of the apostles. Clothing covers up our flesh and in some instances scars and blemishes we don't want seen, but it cannot cover up what we are inside. Clothing of no kind can cover the darkness in the mind of a person. Only the word of the Lord can change the darkness into light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7, Paul writes this, admonition. You are looking at things according to appearance. If anyone is convinced he himself is Christ, he should consider this concerning himself again, that just as Christ himself is, so also are we. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, we read, let your adornment not be the external kind, braiding hair and putting on gold jewelry or putting on fine clothing, but the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is highly valuable in the sight of God. Peter was not saying that this mode of dress was right or wrong, but rather explaining that it is not what defines us as a child of Jehovah. The prophet Jeremiah states, the heart is deceitful more than anything else, and it is disastrous who can understand it. I, Yahweh, examine the mind, I test the heart, and give to each one according to his way, according to the fruit of his deeds. That's in chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. No matter how much time we spend trying to make the outside look good, in the end, it is only what's inside that will count. Finally, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, we read this. For from within, from the heart of people, come evil plans, sexual immoralities, thefts, murders, adulteries, acts of greed, malicious deeds, deceit, licentiousness, envy, abusive speech, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a person. The word heart used here is the Greek word cardia, where we get our word for heart. It was used in Jesus' time figuratively for the thoughts or feelings, according to Strong's Dictionary and others. So out of our minds come all these things. 
We need to forget about all the religious paraphernalia on the outside and concentrate on the inside, getting our minds filled with His truth. Only by doing that will we get our life in order and become pleasing sons and daughters before the Lord. Thanks for watching, and until next time, give life, give love, and give Jesus. You have enjoyed today's Daily Bread. Join us again next week.